We can also getting OSPF. We can do under interface. We can also do globally. And we also need to use the process ID correctly if you are using if you are doing under the interface. You cannot use different process ID because they will go in different process. You see, when we are doing under interface, this process ID matters. We need to use the same process ID on all interface if you want all of them to work in one in an autonomous system. One OSPF. Um, and another thing is you can mix both methods. You can use the traditional method. See one of the interface, they follow the traditional method with wildcard mask. The other one straight on the interface. You can mix both. All right, so, so this is the command for syntax for the traditional method. This is for the interface level where you don't need to worry about wildcard mask or subnet mask or IP address. All that you need to do is go to the interface and say IP OSPF 10 area 0. All right, about the router ID, we all know that a unique router ID is must within a, not only within an area, throughout the autonomous system. A unique router ID is needed. Every router should have a name. And that name is 32 bit IP address format. It need not to be an IP address on any of the router or any of the interface, but it needs to be in that IP address format, 32 bit like 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. This you can use this command under OSPF and manually assign the router ID like, like this. Router OSPF, router ID 1.1.1.1. Now, this address may be there on the interface, but not mandatory. Even if it is not there in any of the router, any of the interface, Still, you can use it as a router ID. It is just an identification. Now, if the router ID is not given, then OSPF will pick the IP address on the loop back interface. It will pick the highest IP address among all the Lubeck interface addresses. You may have more than one Lubeck interface with different addresses. The highest IP address will be taken. Again, this is the first preference. You give it manually. If you don't give, only then it will go and take the highest IP address from the Lubeck interface. What if you didn't give the router ID manually, there is no Lubeck interface. Then it is going to take the highest IP address from the active physical interface. Yep, so this is how the router ID is uh, assigned to a OSPF running router. And this using the router ID, the hello packets, updates, everything goes. With the router ID only, they know who is talking to me. The routers will know who is giving me this update. There is no other identification. So the router ID need to be unique. If two routers have same router ID, you know what will happen. Then both the routers update will be considered as updates coming from single router. So that will cause problem. 
So router ID need to be unique. Now, this router ID is also helping to avoid loop. How? In OSPF, loop is prevented because of this router ID. When a router send an update, it sends with the router ID. When this update goes and comes back via another interface, this router won't take it because the router ID is its own router ID in that update packet. Its own router ID packets it won't accept. So this is again another problem. If you have two routers with same router ID, they don't learn each other. That's another uh, problem that will occur if you have similar outputs. All right. <clears throat> now, the router ID that is picked in from the Lubac interface it can be in a routing table. It need not to be also. You, you may advertise it in OSPF. You may not also. See, sometimes address may be there, but you may not be willing to advertise the network. No problem. The only difference is, if you advertise that router ID, the neighbor can ping the address. Otherwise, it will be simply used as the ID. Advertising Lubac interface address, which is already picked as the picked up as the router ID, is not mandatory for forming neighbor. If you only wish to provide reachability, then you advertise. Otherwise, don't do because it's not mandatory. For example, when I have two routers. 10001 and 002 11111 12 12 12 12 Now according to B router the neighbor's address is 12 12 12 12 Now, if I don't advertise this in A, this address will not be pingable. It is okay. The address will not be pingable, but all the updates that is given is pingable. There may be some networks learned from top routers. Those networks can be pinged from B via A. But A is one address, which is used as the router ID, is not pingable. It is just used as an ID, that's all. So in the neighbor table, you find this, but not in the routing table. I do not want to reveal my, I do not want anyone to reach my router ID. Or another, I do not want, uh, I do not want anyone to ping this address, which is used as an outright. Then don't advertise. It's not mandated. Now, if you are if you are changing router ID after neighborship is established with the neighbor, then it will be a long process. I repeat, router IDs are elected in the beginning itself. See, as soon as the baby is born, the first thing is they give a name to the baby. Before joining the baby to a kindergarten or a, or a primary school, the first thing we do is give a name. If not, then uh, problem. In house, you may be calling Laddu. And that will become a name 
because you you like it so much to call laddu but when we reach uh, first standard we will feel bad for um, calling children laddu because the children don't like it now you start thinking uh, and you come up uh, with a nice name and it is difficult for you now to call with this new name even though the name is so cute and new as soon as you see the child's face only laddu comes in your mind not the new name it's very difficult not only that changing the name in school is not that easy you need to go to the name registration birth registration office give the name you need to say sorry sir apologize you did not um, register you forgot we were calling laddu laddu now we we want to call pintu pintu and then we need to bring the registered uh, name document to the school then only the change happens it's a long process they will remove the name laddu from the register now they will change it into pintu that is what happens here OSPF already shared the laddu name the old router id which is dynamically picked from the interface to the neighbors now if you are giving your own custom router id it won't take effect immediately you need to reload or you need to restart the ospf by using this it is like you need to cancel the old registration of your child in the school and do new registration with the name pintu show ip ospf will show you the ospf that you run on the router can we run more than one ospf on a router yes we can how many if someone is asking how many you need to give one nicely on his head there but you cannot do it because it's an interview uh, so you need to say as many as you want uh, that's not a relevant question how many ospf you can run who cares it is allowing us as many as we want if you don't have much interface what is the use of having a 500 ospf possible 2000 ospf possible 65000 65535 what what is that that's not a relevant question but in india you can expect that as a only question how many ospf can be can be run on a router see as many as you want sometimes you will need two sometimes you may need three not more than that any scenario you take on earth i have not seen anywhere more than 3 3 itself is too much on the route so when we have vrf when we do mpls layer 3 vpn for each vpn means for each vrf vrf has got connected to vpn so for v- each vpn if you like to have a separate if you like to have ospf you, you need to have separate ospf so that's not a relevant question how many if if you want to know how many just put question mark router ospf question mark it will show 65535 if he is happy with the question the sorry answer then he is on dumb interviewer sitting there because he is just going with the figure 65535 what is the use is that question so as many as we want is the answer now when you type show ip ospf you can see the process id that is assigned there is only one ospf running and you can also see this is a abr router how do i know because i can see area 
as well as area one member. Yeah, I can see some some uh, some outputs are omitted. Uh, I can see one interface in area one, and another interface should be there in area zero. Otherwise, this won't be listed here. So, verification commands show IP protocol, show IP out OSPF. If you have multiple OSPF, if you have multiple OSPF, and if you wish to see the routes learned through a particular OSPF, then we have to see the process ID. Show IP OSPF uh, interface and then G0 slash 0. When you say that, it will show you the interface, uh, what area it belongs to, and then under what uh, process. You see, for, for each OSPF process, there will be a separate router ID. I repeat, if you have four OSPF, process ID 1, 2, 3, for each OSPF, the router will take separate, separate router ID. If it would have taken the loopback address, for the second OSPF, it will not take same 1.1.1. It will take some another loopback interface. Or if there is no loopback interface, it will take from physical interface, 10.0.0. So for each OSPF, there is a separate process needed because they are separate OSPF, even though they are running on the same router. And when you type show IP OSPF interface, you show, it shows the router ID to which it belongs to, meaning every process has got their own router ID. So it shows to which router ID it belongs to, which area it belongs to, how many neighbors are discovered through that interface. Not only that, the network type, that is very important. If it is Ethernet, then you will see network type as broadcast. If it is serial interface, you will see it as point to point. And also you will see the timer. What is the timer we discussed in the previous class? Hello is what? That is what time? 10 and 40. Yep. So all these informations are seen under the interface command. Show IP OSPF, we already saw the output here. This is show IP OSPF. And then show IP OSPF neighbor. It will list you all the neighbors. Uh, if you want to see for a particular neighbor in detail, then you can specify the, the neighbor address. Now, when you type show IP route, it shows the complete routing table. And if you wish to see only the OSPF routes, then you say route OSPF. O means OSPF, IA means coming from another area, inter area. IA O O E2 O E1 O N2 O N1. These are all the different uh, IDs in the routing table for the routes learned through OSPF. If you see only O, then may, that network is learned from the same area. That network is learned through type 1, type 2 LSA. If you see OIA, that is coming from another area, which is learned through type 3 LSA. If you see E2 and E1, those are coming from another autonomous system, like EIGRP is redistributed into OSPF. So they are all E1, E2, that is type 5. E2 path cost not calculated, no path cost. 
detail I'll explain you later in E1 podcast pattern. Now N1, N2 is same podcast, not calculated, podcast calculated, but the difference is this is type 7 LSE. Right, these are all the IDs for OSPF run routes. Show IP OSPF interface and interface name. This is what I was talking to you. Uh, here I was telling you show IP OSPF interface. You will see router ID, area ID, adjacency, uh, information like how many neighbors. You will also see the timers and the network type. That's what I want to show you here. You see the network type is broadcast. And you see the timer here. There is one neighbor. And this is the neighbor's address. The router ID of DR, uh, the local router, the router ID of DR is shown here. Show IP OSP of neighbor shows the neighbors. And not only that, you can also see what priorities are given for the neighbor and what adjacency state. This is DR other. Who is DR other? This guy is DR other, but it is forming full adjacency, which means router B must be a DR or a BDR. Okay, see if neighbor is 10.64.0.1, uh, router B should be 10.64.0.2. See, 64.0.2 is a DR. That is why you have full adjacency. And you have a serial link, so there is no DR, BDR election. Uh, it is only point to point. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which means the the other router, because it is configured with priority zero, usually on uh, Ethernet interface, the priority used to be one, only then it can participate in election. Here, they have configured as zero so that it will never participate in an election. So no one is participating, so no BDR. Okay, if there is another router, then that would have been elected as the BDR. Then no DR BDR. No DR. We have different network types, uh, which is discussed already in the previous chapters. Like if you have a serial wire, then it is point to point. You can also configure an Ethernet wire to be a point to point. Say, for example, if you have two routers only and it is Ethernet, there's only two routers. There is really no need for DRBDR. There is no need for DRBDR. If more than two, you need DRBDR. If you just got two routers, not necessary. But problem is, this fast Ethernet is considered as broadcast network type because they are using Ethernet. Fast Ethernet, Ethernet, Gig Ethernet, all Ethernets are considered as broadcast, so there will be a DR VDR election. But what we do in the real world is we go to those interfaces which is known to be a point to point. We say IP OSPF network type point to point. So when you say point to point, then there won't be DR BDR election. By default, the priority is one, and there will be one DR and one BDR. To avoid this DR and BDR, either you can go to those interface and make the priority zero, or just configure Network type as point to point. That is the best option. Go to the interface and say IP OSPF network type point to point. When you put this command, 
the priority will be automatically set to zero and there won't be DR BDR election. Only neighbor will be coming up and there won't be DR BDR. And it is good. You no need DR BDR when you have two routers only. When you have more than two to avoid loop, we need one router to whom all the updates will be reported and that router will distribute to others that prevents duplication of update as a result there is no loop. Okay. Now network type point to point by default point to point in serial links. Network type broadcast by default, it is in Ethernet, any Ethernet links. Now you can go to, yes. Uh, you see, you can answer for this question. Let me give you some explanation, then you will answer it. The reason why you are configuring it as point to point is OSPF thinks, even though for you it is point to point, it's a, it's a Ethernet wire. OSPF considers Ethernet wire as a broadcast. OSPF thinks that you may have a switch in the middle and you may have many routers. Only through Ethernet wire you can connect a switch. If you have a serial wire, that is not possible. There is no switch with serial ports. So, no, you are just, your mic is um, very close to your mouth or something. You are, don't touch your mic uh, again. Mm -hmm. Now, please focus. Um, now, when there is Ethernet, router assumes, OSPF assumes that you may have more than one neighbor. So it will try to find the DR and BDR. The election will be conducted. But because there is no third router, the one with the bigger ID, router ID will be a DR, the other one will be a BDR, which this which the, this election is not really needed when you have just two routers. So to avoid this unwanted, unnecessary election process, you went to one of this interface and say IP OSPF network type point to point. And this says, okay, I will not participate in election. I no need an election. But this guy says, I need an election because you did not say it has point to point. So this will try to find the DR and BDR. At last, when this router one is not supporting, this will declare itself as a DR. Is that really necessary? No. To avoid that, what you do? You can figure both the side point to point. I'm not saying it is mandatory. I'm saying it's good practice. It is doing things with consciousness. Doing things with proper understanding. Doing point to point on both sides is doing things with proper knowledge. What I'm doing, I know. But if I argue saying one side is enough, 
the other side you see even you don't configure it is farming labor if someone talks like that poor guys they don't know what they are doing they simply know some command that's all they really don't know what they are doing did i answer your question ko Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, when you configure one side, output is going to be same, but unnecessary election process gets initiated on one side, not on the other side. You can still avoid both side election process, and that will be more relevant. So do it on both side. That's the right way of doing it. You saw a flight flying with uh, three engines out of four, but you cannot make it as a routine uh, flying experience. Always flying with three engines. You got four engines. All four should be working fine because it flies with three engines. You don't uh, say a flight will only fly with three engines. Or is it really needed for four engines? <clears throat> like that. Okay, so point to point, I already told you there is no need for DR video. Wait a minute, we have missed something here. <clears throat> See, whenever we have some old technology like frame relay or ATM or X.25 as the network in between the neighbor routers see in between these routers you have you're not having ethernet instead you have a frame relay and this is serial in that scenario only you will have five modes one of the mode is point to point you can go to this non broadcast interface serial link is a non broadcast port you can make it as point to point it will behave like a point to point no dr bdr timers are 10 second and 40 second or you can go and configure it as broadcast but in reality it is non broadcast so, so two types are over uh, out of five two modes are over point to point and broadcast see this point to point is on the lan but this point to point that you configure as a mode is on the nbma type I'll give you the video of this one for you to watch because this is a interview preparation class. I cannot go through the configuration part and blah blah. As of now, you need to just know these five types and the differences, and the configuration part and more in depth. You will get it from the video which I'm going to share. Hmm. Zero. Hmm. Hmm. See, when the priority is zero, you mean to tell them not to participate in election. So they will they will all be in two way state, and then they will all be in DR. Other uh, I. I, I would ask you to first do this and uh, confirm this. There won't be DR BDR election if there is no no problem. 
Well, let me tell you what will be the result. You see, OSP will send a hello packets, and OSP will try to OSP will try to form adjacency. When it comes to X start state, it won't come to X start state. After two way state, because the priorities are not zero, there won't be DR BDR election. They will get stuck there. That's all. That is what the result is. All right. All right. Interface, Lubeck, zero, IP address 10. Dot Zero, sorry, let me use a notepad to make this configuration fast. Notepad. Okay, enable config T interface with that zero IP address 3.3.3.3.2.5.2.5.2.5. IP OSPF. Process ID, area ID, interface, F0 slash 0, is it F? No, T0, 0, 0, 0. Um, not bad. IP OSPF network type. Sorry, you want to say you want to put priority, no? IP OSPF priority. Zero. This is enough if I make this spelling mistake and problem. Now, before we move further, let me show you some uh, verification. Show IP OSPF interface. You can see OSPF is running on Geek00 and also on Lubeck. Network type is Lubeck. On the Ethernet, network type is broadcast. Timer is 10 and 40, and uh, I, cons I configured the priority to be zero, but the default is actually one. I made it as zero. All right, now let us go to the next router. See, this time I'm not setting any priority. You'll see priority one, which is default. Then I will make it as one. Uh, and after that, I'll go and make it as zero. But I don't want uh, I don't want R3 to negotiate. So I'll just shut down the port for a while because I want to show you that priority thing. R3, which we already configured, I shut down the port. Hmm. This is R2. Oh, 
Okay, let's verify now. So IPOSPF interface brief. You can see the priority is one. Sorry, that uh, this process ID. Um, um, show IP OSPF interface. The priority is one. Okay, the process ID also one. The priority is one. Now what I want to do is I want to change the zero. Now let's check show IP OSPF interface brief command first. See, this is process ID. It's still not zero. That's PID means process ID. And uh, you see the process ID is still one, but the priority is zero. Okay, now let's go back to uh, router three and unshut. And I'll also go to router one and configure. Router one, route one, route one. Okay, now. Let us verify this output show IP OSPF neighbor. So still the neighbor has not come wait for some time. Go to router three and check. Show IP OSPF neighbor. You see it is still in two way only. Alright? Because when there is no priority and if it is gig Ethernet. They are stuck. You see, the other one is also priority zero, router one, which we just configured the last router. You know, state. And it continues to be in two way state. It cannot go to extra state. Let us debug. Debug IP OSP process. Debug IP OSP events. We will bring it inside the frame. It's not inside the frame. And you see, it is receiving hello, but the neighbor is not coming. Uh, for that, if you want to see the reason, you have adjacency command, ADG. Uh, now you will see why it is not familiar. Just only hellos are sent. Sure, I do SPF name. It's in two way only. It will continue to be in two way. It will never form a neighbor. The neighbor will never get established. It got struck. I'll do one thing to have more clarity. I'll just shut down the interface. I shut down the interface. And now I'm going to unshut. You will see more clearly. You see, in the previous class, we saw about the sequence number. This is the sixth update coming from, okay, it is built locally. I say no shutdown, right? Yes. Okay. See, it is too weird. That's all. You don't go more than that. No extra state. You see? And then it will learn from neighbor. You see, if uh, there should be at least a DR, BDR, or there should be master slave. Neither this nor that will happen because it's if it is point to point, there will be master slave instead of DR, BDR. But this is not point to point. This is broadcast. You see, show IP OSPF interface brief. Sorry, interface show IP OSPF interface geek zero zero zero. Yeah, the network type is broadcast. If it is broadcast, it needs the DRBDR election. But I showed you the DRBDR is zero. So it got struck. It will never form neighbor. 
it will never form the it won't go further if the extract state is not complete it cannot go to exchange state and loading state and full state show ip ospf neighbor still in two way only it cannot move further to form neighbor to form neighbor it needs to go to the full state you understand sir? right it won't work okay so network types i think we need to continue this we have point to point and broadcast if it is point to point i would like to show you this one thing and then i'll bring you back because we have gone that far in the lab i want to show you just one more point to point we convert as point to point and then you will see the forming neighbor because it is broadcast there is dr bdr election mandate but when you change that into point to point Okay, now let us say interface G zero 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 IP OSPF network type. You see, you have point to point, and now I will go to router one also and configure the same. Okay, so after saying, look at this. It is only forming neighbor with router two. It is router two. We configured the show IP OSPF interface uh, zero 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 zero. We configured it as point to point. From broadcast, we changed into point to point. For point to point, the default priority itself is zero only. Even if you don't set show IP OSPF neighbor, you can see. Might be showing like this. Ah, with two dot two dot two dot two, it goes to the exchange state. But you see, it is confusing with router three. In point to point, how can there be two different neighbor? That is where the confusion are going on. So you see, it goes to three and it goes to two. It goes to three and it goes to two. That is why you should not configure as point to point if you have three routers. So what I'll do, I'll shut down this router. I shut down. You see. The device is off. Now, you will see the neighbor coming up successfully. Look at this loading to full. So this OSPF is not a chumma protocol. This is very clever protocol. You said point to point. Why the third guy is coming? It was not allowing. But now it is very clear that I have only one neighbor, and it has got full addresses. But when I start the third router again, the problem will start again. On. Mostly there will be a problem, or if neighbor is already there, uh, I don't know whether the, this will interact. But during the election time, you cannot have three, and it's a point to point. Let's see what happens now. Uh, now these two are already point to point established neighbor. Will it get disturbed or not? We need to check. 
when the third one comes now, will that get disturbed or not? Usually the DRBDR time only, the election process time, the extra time only, you know, there should not be three if it is point to point. Mm -hmm. Okay, the switch is ready now, the port is ready. Uh, confusion again. Two was the earlier neighbor, now the neighbor two has gone. Three has come. Okay, so it is an, see, this is re resetting again, again. So not good. When you have point to point, you cannot have more than one neighbor. It will disturb. Okay, so that's the story. Moral of the story is two routers only if you're configuring point to point on the interface. See, it was not really a my default point to point it was broadcast i changed it as point to point because i know there is only two routes now the neighbor is coming but when i add the third route then again the problem starts why so says it's it's not two router don't tell lie i'm seeing three router that clever is OSP. okay All right, so in, in a point-to-point -point network, there is no more than one multicast address because it is only two routers point-to-point -point means what? This router and this router. Again, this router and this router. Only it is two router, they need only one multicast address in order to discover the neighbor and to send the updates to the neighbor. But if you have a DR router, only to speak to DR, you need a special address. I repeat. Only to speak to DR, you need a special address that is where 24006 comes. So I should not when it is used. Whenever you want to speak to DR, whenever you want to speak to DR, it will not be used. Sorry, will be used. So, very simple. There should not be any confusion. 24005 is the only address used in point to point. 24006 is used along with 5 in a Broadcast. Now, what for the six? Six is only talk to the DR family, DR and DDR. That is what DR family. When you send an update to 24006, it will go to the DR family, the DR and DDR. There will be one DR and one BDR. And if the DR want to send a message to everyone, it will use five. So that you go to all DR others. And if the priority is set to zero, they don't participate in elections. So this thing is coming next. If priority is zero to C, you will never participate in election. The one with the higher priority has become a DR. The next the higher priority has become BDR. And the others will Continue as DR other. Again, DR election is non preemptive. What does that mean? See, right now this priority is high. This priority is high, it is DR. What if I make this priority as 10? Will this become a DR? No. It is non preemptive. Once it has become a king, till he dies, he will continue as a king only. Even if someone comes with a very big muscle power, he cannot become a king. He needs to wait for the current king to die. Only then he can come to the throne. That is what called as non preempt Once election is over, whatever the superior winning packet comes, hollow packet comes, it cannot win. If the if 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 the priority is a type, if if everyone has got the same priority, then the one with the bigger router ID becomes the DR. This is how you set the priority. We already saw this in the small lab that we did. Um, as we already saw, if we set zero, this cannot be elected. In the broadcast environment. 
when the network type is broadcast, this is mandated. There should be a DRBDR, otherwise the neighbor will get stuck in a two-way state. You saw that line. Okay, this is the NVMe network types, not that important. There are five NVMe network types and their differences. This is not important. The reason is uh, you don't have that frame relay or X.25 or anything like that, ATM in today's network. That's why I have given you those videos, those three videos. We cover all these, these things, all right? I want you to go through those three videos and come. We will discuss the 